Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. So, welcome to part 1 of how to gem all nat 5s. This is basically a continuation of the series I was doing before, how to gem all nat 4s. Um, I already went through that. You can actually go through my channel or search for it um, on my channel to 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 find all the all the gem guides for how to gem every single nat 4 in the game. I basically went through every single one. I accidentally skipped the wild thing, so I'll actually talk about them a little bit later as well. Um, and I am not going to be talking about the Nat 5s that don't actually currently exist in the game. So all the Heroes Fest versions, Light Dark versions of the Nat 5 monsters, um, and all, I, I think the Siegfrieds and the, the Dark Shiva um, doesn't exist in the game currently. So there's no, nobody in the game actually has those monsters. Um, this was data mined from the race for Light Dark Eggs. You cannot actually summon them, so they're actually un unobtainable currently. But in the future, maybe they'll they'll become obtainable, so I can start talking about them once they do. So, um, first things first, I I will talk about the wild things because I actually accidentally skipped them in the last video. So I'll just very very quickly go through them. Um, this is a fire wild thing. She's an attacker type. She's got decent stats. Um, nice nice amount of HP, a little bit of defense, not too bad. Her attacks over 3k as an attacker. Uh, it's not it's pretty good. She has two self sustain skills. I would, if you have her evil 3, I would actually just gem her full full attack, just go uh, triple attack, or you, if you have good crit rate substats, you can go with crit rate double attack. Um, triple attack would actually get you higher DPS, but if you have a ruin set um, with nice crit rate substats, like at least 20% crit rate substats, you can go with crit rate double attack, um, and then she would have some pretty nice self sustain. If you if you're using her early on for BA and you only have her evil 2, you can slap an HP gem on her and you can go HP double attack. Or if you're planning on using her for PvP, you can put an HP gem on her. But she's actually quite good with triple attack because her self-sustain is um, dependent on her damage. So the more damage she deals, the more she heals. Yeah, someone, someone is, someone is banging upstairs. Uh, where the? <laughs> so this is the this is the water wild thing. She's got a sixty percent stun and a sixty percent petrify. Um, not really too good. You could possibly use her on arena defense, but her defense is actually too low. Uh, I think HP HP defense is probably the only way to go. Actually, I would say she's a no. She's just the the defense stat is just way too low. She's just gonna get killed in like one turn. Um. Even if you gem her full tank, you're just gonna die very, very easily. All right, this is the wood wild thing. This is a monster I was I used before to do dragons um, B10 before I got like light Medusa. I used her because she had a hundred percent petrify and a hundred percent sleep, which is quite nice. Um, if you're running two CC units on dragons B10, you don't necessarily need to have an AOE um, AOE CC. But if you only have one stun or or sleep or you know one one crowd control unit, um, then you can just basically gem, just make sure she has 100% crit because her her CC is based on crit, so she has two 100% um, CC skills. So you basically just gem her with crit rate. I think if you have a dark monster, you gem her with crit rate double attack because she has no, uh, she's not not going to get hit at all because of element you know. They, they'll all, always hit the monster that has element disadvantage, so she's never going to be touched, even if she's a defender type. Uh, for Dragon Speed 10, I would gem her with double attack because she's never going to get, you know, no nobody's going to hit her ever, so there's no point making her tankier. Um, some people do use her for arena defense as well. Um, she's quite annoying, actually. She's quite she's really tanky, and if you put her on arena defense, she can serve as your CC monster. Um, basically, just go with HP, HP defense and put some high resistance on her so she can just keep stunning you know I, I would put either conviction set i think if you if you um yeah you have to go oh wait you, you need the crit no hp defense is not gonna work you have to go hp crit defense um uh, yeah it's the only way that you have to go hp crit defense unless you have like really really high crit substats but then not having 100 percent crit kind of wastes her potential to um, to 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 always CC. So you you kind of have to make sure she has that crit. But she's she has pretty nice tanky base substats. So people are usually going to ignore her. So you most people would probably go uh, HP crit defense. If you have very very high crit substats, you can go HP HP defense as well. And 
with other substats, if you go HP crit defense, I would say with, with your substats, try to push your resistance as high as possible, if you can. The uh, the light wall thing is a is a pretty nice monster. She's a balance type, and she's got defense down, 100% defense down, and shock. Um, if you're planning on using her for arena defense, I would just gem her as tanky as possible because she's probably gonna get focused because a lot of people know she's usually the squishiest one. If you're je if you're putting her on defense, because a lot of people use light or dark attackers, and dark dark monsters have advantage over light. So if you just leave her on the open. Um, they're usually going to attack her first, so you want to kind of make sure she's she's the tankiest one. So HP HP defense would definitely be the best. She's also a light monster, so she starts with 0% resistance. Um, you'll want to try to push her resistance as high as possible with substats, or if you have a conviction set, um, you can try to push her resistance um, that way. Yeah, that's I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> The, the Dark Wild Thing is an attacker. Uh, the unique thing about her is she has a 30% crit on both skills, and she's also dark, so she starts with 100% crit damage, which makes her a really, really nice nuker. And if you have her um, if you have her with a triangle slot, you can put a crit damage in on, gem on her, and that would actually give her the highest amount of DPS. Um, basically, the, the, the good thing about her is, since she starts with 30% crit, plus her base crit is 10%, um, she she starts with 40% base crit. So if you can put three gems together, that basically just has, um, you know, 30, like 20% crit rate each. Or if you have a, a uh, intuition set that you can put on her, you only need 40% from substats to push 100% crit on this monster. So th the really good thing about her is you can, you can basically just push 100% crit with substats and you don't have to waste a, a crit rate gem on her. So you can just... Um, if you're if you're a beginner, you don't have very very good gems, and you happen to have this monster, you can just gem her up like any nuker, and you can go with crit rate double attack, and that will you know her base attack plus the crit rate gem, and plus basically just one crit rate substats will will push her crit rate to 100%. So that's she's really really easy to gem if you're using her as a dark nuker early on. Um, a slightly more advanced build would be to go with um, you know intuition, triple, triple attack. Um, that would that would actually get you higher DPS, or you can go with Intuition Double Attack Crit Damage. She's actually the only monster in the game that is um, that reaches her max potential with a triangle slot because of how you know how how the balance between uh, the optimization between attack and crit damage is. She already has a crit rate, so she doesn't need the crit rate gem. She's also a dark monster, so she starts with 100% crit damage. So you can basically, uh, if you have if you have two attack gems and one crit damage gem, that would actually give her the highest amount of DPS if you if you happen to have her with a triangle slot. Um, but yeah, she's she's quite nice. She doesn't really need a square slot, but to reach her max potential, the the triangle is actually pretty good. You can check on um, MSL Nest for the damage calculation with crit damage for the overall DPS if you um, if you're curious about that. That's actually it's actually quite a quite a nice website. Uh, it's called MSL Nest. I did a review, like kind of last week, talking about the website because the uh, the author of it um, asked me to. So I, 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 uh, I thought it would be a really really nice idea to shout them out because when I first saw the website, it was it was really really detailed, really really nice. It's a MSL database that you can search and you can look up um, gem builds for monsters to kind of optimize their damage or optimize their tankiness. Alright, so um, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. I'm going to move from the oldest Nat 5 to the newest Nat 5. I'm going to move from, you know, down to up instead of up to down in case they add more Nat 5s in the future. So I can just, you know, I can just talk about them if they do add some Nat 5s. So first monster I'm going to be talking about is the Fire Purse. Um, I'll probably split this into three parts. We'll just talk, we'll just probably go up to like the Nightmares or something um, or, the, or the Shivas. For, for now and then we'll, we'll go go up the list until we we reach the Artemis um, so this is the fire purse she is a um, double sap monster she's basically the best sapper in the game because her AoE sap is a hundred percent two two turn sap that um, lands two saps so she lands two two turn saps on her her AoE skills she also has a 60% chance to sap um, for two one turn saps and she's she has very nice attack stats like she's a balance type so she's tanky she has um, she actually has the highest attack out of all the all the sappers in the game. Uh, most of the sappers are are uh, actually wait no she doesn't have the highest. I, I think the I think the wood gen might actually have higher attack. I'm not too sure. 
Because he is an attacker type. Dang it, where's the Jin? No, she's she's still slightly higher. Is she? Yeah, she's slightly higher. Um she has the highest attack out of all the all the sapper monsters in the game. Um, so that's that's actually quite nice. She she can hit pretty hard. Um, the, the way I would gem her for Golem's B10 is if you have a light tank, someone someone because Golem's B10 is all all dark, right? So if you have a light monster to tank the damage, um, she's never gonna get hit. So you can just gem her with triple attack, or you can gem her with like crit rate double attack on ruin. And she would deal like a lot of damage at the same time. She would provide the sap, so she can she can be your DPS unit to clear the waves as well as your sapper to help you sap the boss. Um, so you can gem her full glass cannon if you're using her for B10. If you have a a light um, tank monster, you can gem her with HP double attack as well. If you don't, um, if you want her to just be tanky, maybe. I don't know why you would want her to just be tanky. Maybe if you're using her for like TLC 455, you can go with like double HP attack or HP defense attack, like a like a bruiser. Um, I would probably wouldn't gem her full tanky. I don't think there's any any really really any use of um, of having a, a fire Persephone that's like full tank. But you can definitely do that because her stats are very very balanced. So you can you can basically gem this monster any way you want. Uh, this is a Water Persephone. She is like, she's probably one of the most popular Nat Fives. A lot of people really like using her. She's a passive healer. Um, she heals for ten percent of her max HP every single turn that she attacks. So that's why a lot of people like using her. She's a balance type, so her base HP is actually not that high. But because of her passive skill, um, a lot of people like to gem her with triple attack for PVE. There's also an advanced build for her, um, which is double HP defense for PvP because some people like to focus around PvP depending on your team if, if you have no h higher threats if you're running a lot of tanks uh, um, or units with high defense and she's like passively healing people might try to kill her first so you can go with double double HP defense if you have her like evil 3 and using her on defense um, that build definitely does work as well she you basically just want to get her resistance as high as possible for PvP um, for PvE it doesn't really matter, you just want to stack her HP as high as possible. So for PvE, like if you're using her for dungeons and stuff, um, I would recommend just Gem of Life, Triple HP, um, as much flat HP substats as possible. For PvP you can go with uh, High Resist, you can go with Conviction, you can still go with Gem of Life. You can go with Triple HP depending on your team, or you can go with HP HP Defense if, you, um, if your team doesn't have a lot of other threats and people would like to focus her down first. So this is the Wood Persephone. Now, a lot of people really don't like this monster because she's, like, compared to her other counterparts, she's not very good. But she's actually still a very, very strong Nat 5. Like, the Persephone fa family is really, really OP. Basically, all the Persephones are super, super strong. Um, I actually still use mine. I only have her at, at 5 stars, um, level 50. But I use her for TLC 55 because TLC 55 is, I think the elements are water and wood. So wood has element over, elemental advantage over water, and the boss is all light. So um, you're element neutral. You're either element you have element advantage or you're element neutral um, compared to any other sappers. And she is the best wood sapper because she has a hundred percent two two one turn sap on her first skill, and she has a hundred percent attack down. Like this is actually very very strong. Two turn a hundred percent attack down. No on her AOE like no other monster in the game actually has this. Um, she's Definitely not like the, the worst of the Persephone, but she's still a very, very good Nat 5. Um, she's also balance type. She's mo mostly on the tanky side. She's a, lot, a little bit more tanky than the than the um, Fire Persephone. If you have her, I would actually recommend you just use her for TLC 55. If you want to evil 3 some of your other Persephones, you can definitely feed her away. Um, there's really no harm in feeding her as well. But she does have some uses if you're mostly for TLC 55. You can also use her for Golden Speed 10. If you're gemming her for Golden Speed 10, I would gem her the same way as the Fire Persephone, um, just full glass cannon. If you're using her for um, TLC 55, you can put just you can go with uh, HP double attack. I think that that would actually just work because you can use her to clear the waves, the attack. But the boss doesn't take any damage, so if you want her to survive, you can actually go with uh, double HP attack or HP defense attack is actually. Uh, probably optimal just basically HP defense attack and at level 50 um, five stars and you can use her for 
for uh, TLC 55. That's she's actually one of the best, if not the best, for for that floor. This is the Light Persephone. Uh, she's probably one of the best monsters in the game. She's extremely OP. Uh, she has a team morale boost of 20% and a 60% AOE shock. She also has very, very nice stat distribution. She's, she's very tanky and she has a decent amount of attack, low recovery, so basically perfect. And um, mostly used for arena defense. You can use her for farming as well to, to boost up the bar of your, your other monsters as a farming support. Um, she also has a lot of hits, so that's also really nice. Gen generates more blue souls for farming. Um, generates more gold for farming, so that's also very good. You gem her basically full tanky. She is a defender type. Uh, double HP defense is probably really the, the way to get her to have the highest effective HP. Um, she is light, so she doesn't start with any resistance. You want to actually get her resistance high as well. So I would put some... Um, I would put put a... Either put her on Conviction or just some nice resist substats if you can put her on pugilist that's she's actually one of the best monsters for that as well because she has a mor morale boost and a and a nice aoe cc um so you know if you have her on pugilist she's also very very annoying um yeah basically just uh tanky high resistance doesn't really need anything else so this is uh the dark persephone she is probably the best uh She's probably, in my opinion, the best nuker in the game. Like, the, just the best nuker in the game. She she's got a she's got a 30% morale boost on her first skill and a 40% predator skill on her second skill. With and also with her being dark, she has she starts with 100% base crit damage, and she has 3,800 attack. So she's this this thing's gonna nuke so so damn hard. Um, if you just like if you have her on crit rate double attack, um, I think that would definitely that'll probably be the highest DPS. If you have some like godly gems for like, you know, triple attack or crit damage double attack, you know, I am very very close to putting a putting one of my monsters like a dark nuker on a uh, triple attack, a hundred percent crit on intuition. I just need like one more good intuition gem and I can do it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely possible. But I think crit rate double attack. If you're if you're just using her to farm, um, if you're using her for PvP offense, I think that's still the build to go because she she is a nat five. Um, she has pretty nice like with in addition to her high attacks, she actually has decent amount of HP and defense, so she's relatively tanky as well compared to nat four nukers. So she's definitely one of the best monsters as well in the game. Um, yeah, probably my most wanted nat five for for farming because I, I really like farming and stuff. I I really would. If I if I could get a dark Persephone, I, I could uh, I could do some crazy crazy shit. So this is a fire Arthur. Uh, the Arthurs are all re really really strong as well. Um, like the Persephone family, they're they're all really really good monsters. Um, he's basically basically used a lot in arena defense or PvP defense. People like to hide this guy because he's an attacker type, but they also like to gem her or gem him mostly tanky. You either go with HP attack defense or you go with uh, just HP HP defense just to make sure he's really really tanky and doesn't die. Or yeah, if, if you're going with HP attack defense, it means that you have some other threats on your team. So he's not going to get focused and usually they hide hide him if they, they um, have him on HP attack defense. And he's just mostly used for arena defense. He's one of the best monsters. He's got high attack, he's got nice CC and if he gets his off, um, he's... You know he can land an armor break, and that can, that can, uh, that can maybe kill the enemy or something like that. You know, just he's a popular monster. A lot of people like using him. Um, but it's either either the bruiser build or the full tank build for him. So this this is the water Arthur. Um, he's actually one of the most versatile. Uh, monsters in the game because he has a 50% morale boost so this is super super unique and um, the attack down is not really all that important it's basically just for the morale boost you want to make sure that he he gets his aoe off really really fast if you're lucky with your blue soul generation or if you have some other monsters that have some team morale boost like the light succubus or the light persephone um, you can pretty much get your bar full on second turn and that, that could be really, really threatening, especially if you have him on like a Pugilist set. This is definitely one of the best monsters to put on Pugilist if you do have a set for him. Um, he's very, very nice. 
but if you just have like a nice um, conviction set or if you just have a broken set that's with high resistance you can definitely do that as well because he can generate a lot of blue souls once he gets once he gets his aoe off this this thing does a lot of hits and it can generate a lot of blue souls so next turn a lot of your other units um, might have their bars full and that can actually win you the fight he's also very very tanky if you look at his stats it's actually quite nice um a long long time ago they buffed the they buffed the stats of this monster like for some weird reason they just buffed him so if you calculate his stats his stats are actually slightly higher than other nat fives it's just like he's just overpowered like they uh they just made made his stats better just just to just to make him op um and there's there's really there's a lot of ways you can gem him because if you want to use him for farming um you can go with double attack hp because he has a balance type there's a lot of ways to gem him if you're using him for farming you can go with double attack hp um you can go with triple attack as well if you if you're not too worried if you have some good gems on him like if you're using him for b8 farming um, you can go with triple attack he can do the job pretty well because he gets his aoe off pretty fast and that can help your team get their blue blue souls faster and um clear the ways faster um if you're using for him for defense, I would recommend you put him on full tank. So basically, just HP, HP, defense, um, high resistance. You know the 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 general general um, high high tanky high resistance build for for him. If you're using him on defense, you can also go go with him. Um, go go on a bruiser build if you're putting him as a hidden unit on defense. But I don't think I think that's more of a waste because he. Um, unless you have some other really strong morale boost monsters, I really would not put him on defense because he he's relatively tanky. So even if you put him out in the open, they're not going to be able to kill him too fast, especially if you gem him with full tank. And he's mostly used for utility. So even if you put one attack gem on him, it's not really going to do that that much. Um, so I would I would more recommend you um, if you're using him on defense to put him on full tank. So this is the Wood Arthur. Um, he's also a very popular monster. A lot of people like hiding him on defense as well. Um, he has a really, really nice self-sustain. Basically, if he gets a hit off, he pretty much just max heals. Like he just max heal heals himself. So you either burst him in one turn or he just keeps healing. Um, so that's why he's he's actually really, really strong as well. If you have him on double attack HP, um, he can max heal in one hit. If you have him on attack HP defense, I don't think he can max max heal with one hit but he, he can get pretty close so if you have some other healers like a uh, water persephone you can go with that build as well um people basically just use him as a as a hidden dps unit because he comes out he does a lot of damage because he has 3700 attack and he um if you don't kill him in a turn he basically just heals himself back to full so that's one of the benefits of having this monster um you yeah you either go with uh, a double attack HP or you go with HP HP attack. Um, if you're just using this guy for farming, you can go with triple attack as well. But I would if you're using him on um, defense, I would actually recommend you have some resistance as well because that actually that could be pretty important. You know if they have some stun monsters or something like that, they can actually kill him pretty fast or just DC him so they don't have to deal with him. So this is a light Arthur. Um, he's definitely recommended for a full light PvP defense team. This is probably he's probably one of the best monsters in the game to hide as your hidden monster for for defense on PvP. Um, he's also a very nice unit to use for Dragon's B10 because of his shock and high damage. Um, he's got 3,900 base attack. I think that's one of the highest in the game. He's also got decently low recovery. Um, HP is not too high, but defense is uh, is pretty good. So there's the way that you can use him for PvP defense is you can slap an HP gem on him. So in, if you're worried about um, him getting one shotted by some dark attacker, and then you can go with uh, HP double attack. Or if you're feeling ballsy and you have some other threat, like um, you know if you're going like a full light team, you can actually put him on triple attack. So after they kill one of your light units, he pops out the next turn and just like one shots their dark Atito. You know that that's also a possibility um, because of his high high damage. But you basically just want to make sure he's um, you know he he has a decent amount of attack and you know just just enough HP to survive a turn, so he can kill one of the enemy's dark units on. If you're using him on PvP defense, um, if you're using him for dragons, you just gem him full glass cannon. Especially if you have a dark unit. Um, actually, only if you have a dark unit. Because if you have a dark unit, um, dragon speed ten is is light. 
So the light units will always attack the dark units and will never attack him. So you can basically just you're you're safe to just gem him with full glass cannon. So either triple triple attack or uh, crit rate um, double attack ruin. You know that that probably is the highest damage if you if you can get a get a nice gem set like that. Um, yeah, really really nice monster. So this is the dark. Dark uh, Arthur, he is a HP aggress aggressor with very very high HP. He's got um, 4,700. The sap is actually not too strong, but this kind of makes up for it because he hits really really hard with this skill. So basically, you just want to make sure that he uh, he has high HP. Um, pretty much the only way to build him is just triple HP. I would still recommend life because he's just going to be so tanky. Even if they try to armor break and kill him. Um, it's not really going to affect him too much. I would still try to get his resistance as high as possible in case they try to CC him or stun him or anything like that. Um, just make sure that he he has really high HP. That would be number one priority. And number two would be some a little bit of resistance. That would actually be nice. Um, crit rate is actually pretty nice on this monster as well. I recommend the triple HP over the crit rate double HP. I think crit rate double HP has higher DPS, but the triple HP actually makes him much, much tankier. And also, um, because of his high HP pool, the HP gem actually does more than compared to like a Dark Miho, for example. But if you have some crit substats, it would, it would actually be really, really nice on him as well. Um, you can go crit rate double HP as well since he is the, he is dark, so you can take advantage of the dark, um, crit damage multiplier. But it's probably more important to make sure he's tanky if you want to use him on defense, uh, and also with, uh, you know, depending on the threat, depending on if you have other monsters that are higher threat on your team. If you have other monsters that are higher threat on your team, um, people w might want to focus them first. So then that way you can gem with crit rate double HP, so he has slightly higher DPS, sacrificing some tankiness. Or if he's like the highest threat in the team, then you can go with uh, triple HP. Like if you have some other. If you're running something like Water Persephone, Wood Valk, him, and like, you know, Wood Leo, they're, they're probably, they're, they they might kill the Water Persephone first, but then you can also gem her with like crit rate or double HP uh, defense. So she's actually pretty tanky. And then this guy will be will just be whacking them away. It's pretty much my preference because I, I, uh, I like to kill aggressors first. I usually kill aggressors, like number one priority, I always kill aggressors. Um, I... It's mostly because my team has no no CC, no uh, no utility skills. Basically, just full damage. So the thing that basically harms my team the most is aggressors. So I usually like to kill aggressors first. Um, you kind of just have to plan accordingly, depending on your team. If you want to gem him with crit rate double HP or with triple HP. All right. So this is the fire valk. Um, there's really only one way to gem her because her SP siphon is dependent on the damage she deals. So if you don't have at least one attack gem on her, this skill is kind of absolutely useless. Um, if you're using her on defense, you want to make sure she's she's tanky. So I would recommend you go with the Bruiser build on this monster. So basically just HP attack defense, um, just high resistance. You can go with a even go with a Valor set or a protection or or a, or a life set. Um, depending on your team or depending on the set that you have if it has high resistance you can use that use whichever set because she she benefits from HP defense and attack she benefits from all three of these stats um, quite a lot but I I really don't like this monster because she also has really high recovery a lot of her stats are wasted on the recovery so that's actually um, it's a little bit it's a little bit sad all right so this is uh this is the this is the Water Velk. Um, she's she's a very very popular monster. She's also one of the contract monsters that a lot of people get. Um, if you're using her early on for Golden's B8, like you're starting the game, you're just starting the game. I would and you only have her at level 50. I recommend you put um, HP double attack and just throw her into B8, and she can do that do that stage pretty well. And later, if you have her like level 60, um, you can go with triple attack. Then she would have high, enough um, base HP and defense at, at evil two to basically survive if you just have her with triple attack. If you have her like evil three max level, the, the max level build. Um, if you're using her for for um, just nuking purposes, like you're using her as a nuker for golden speed ten or something like that, um, I would recommend triple attack. That's probably the most um, 
the build that gets you the higher DPS compared to crit rate double attack. However, if you have a ruin set on her, you can go with crit rate um, double attack, and that would actually yield higher DPS. If you have a, like at least 20% um, substats from from the crit rate on ruin, and and you can complete a ruin crit rate double attack set, then um, that would actually get, give you higher DPS compared to the triple attack. But yeah, it's. You can also gem her with HP double attack if you're planning on using her as a... Some people use her as a hidden monster on Arena um, on PvP defense. And you can gem her with HP double attack um, so she doesn't get one shot. And she actually does a lot of damage on her first kill. So there's a there's a high potential that she can come out and like, you know, one shot your the enemies like Dark Atita or something like that. This is the Wood Valk. She's also a very popular monster. She actually was a popular monster. Um, she was definitely like top top tier before everyone started getting like pugilist gems. Um, she used to be like just the staple in arena defense. She's really really nice um, because what what she does is if she happens to kill if you happen to kill all their threats, she can she has the potential to solo the enemy team basically. Like if she if you don't have enough damage to kill her. Um, she can she can keep like healing and then healing a lot with this and She has the potential to soul the enemy team. So she's kind of just there to kind of you know You leave her there. You can't really kill her if you're not running a nuker comp and Eventually like if you happen to get all your um, damage healing units killed then she just solos your team or or she just draws with your team and just make sure your your life is a uh, she just makes her life a living hell, basically. Um, but yeah, there's two ways to gem her, depending on the team. Um, some people like to sneak an attack gem on her. I think that's actually a pretty good build. Because if you... Um, she heals for quite a lot, and she also ha she's also relatively tanky with her other stats. And um, you guys might not know about this, but they actually buffed her damage multiplier. So she actually has a higher damage multiplier than at with attack than other monsters. Um... Yeah, they, they used to do that. They used to buff certain nat fives just to make them slightly better than others. Like, just to make them slightly more OP. They don't do that anymore. But she was one of the monsters that were buffed. Um, she used to be a tank type, and then I think they they made her a balance because she was too OP. And then she became really shitty after that, and then a lot of people complained. So they buffed her multiplier to make sure she actually does a lot of damage. So you you might notice that um, even a full, full, uh, full tank Wood Valk, Still, still does significant damage to your team, and that's because she has a higher damage multiplier. So if you sneak an attack gem on her, she actually does quite a lot of damage as well. Um, it's either HP attack defense or HP HP attack, depending on your team. If your team has other like threat monsters, um, then you want to gem her with uh, with one attack gem. If your team is like just all tanks, then you just make, make her as tanky as possible because they they might potentially try to kill her first. Because they know that she's not she's not the tankiest monster because she is a balance type. Um, you know, say for example, you have a a team with her water purse, um, a fire shiva, and some you know some other random healing monster. Uh, they might actually try to kill her first because she she has the lowest of the um, base stats compared to the other like the tanky base stats compared to the other uh, other monsters. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, the Light Valk, she is a balance type monster. I think she's one of the be better monsters also to hide on arena defense because she's balance type and she's also light. So you can she can come out, um, do a lot of damage, and also maybe I, I don't think she has enough damage to like one shot the enemy enemy nuker, but she can come out and stun them, and she can do a lot of damage to them. And then if you have another monster attacking that same monster, um, say for example they have a Dark Mona or a Dark Katito, there's a potential that she can kill with the help of an another monster kill that monster. So if you have like a full light defense team and you have her as a hidden, she's actually a very very good monster for that. Um, she also has Predator, so Predator is also really nice. I would actually just gem her full tank because she, um, they might still try to kill her first because she's, you know, she's not the tankiest and she's also light. So if they have Dark Nukers, they might actually try to kill her first. Um, if you have her as a hidden, you can sneak an attack gem on her. If you have her out in the open, then I would recommend you go with HP HP defense. She's mostly used for arena defense. Um, damn, she has really nice colors, especially the variant. Um, yeah, she also has Predator on her second skill, so if she gets her AoE off, it actually does a lot of damage. I would recommend you put her on, on, uh, 
on on hidden and put her with an attack gem because the this way the predator actually does a lot more damage if you ever ever get her like if she ever gets her attack bar full um with one attack gem she should probably be able to one shot a lot of like full nuke um gatitos moonflowers uh you know monas and stuff like that so if you have her out in the open uh hp hp defense if you have her as a hidden hp attack defense um you can go with you can go with uh you can go with Valor, you can go with Intuition, you can go with Conviction. Basically, you want to have some resistance, but if you have like a set that gives her bonus damage with resistance, that would also be really, really nice. So she's also a arena defense monster. She has stun and silence. Um, she's also very, very tanky. She's just basically a, you basically leave her out in the open, make her as tanky as possible, and she's just there to be really annoying. Uh, she's gonna keep stunning, silencing. Um, yeah, she's just there to annoy the living shit out of the enemy. I think that's that's pretty much her her job. She actually looks really nice as a variant as well. The variant color looks much better than the original one. I don't think the Dark Valk's too great, but she you can you can definitely use her if you if you want to. Alright, so this is the this is the uh Fire Nightmare. Um she's an attacker type monster. She has a 80% defense down and a thirst. She's very I would say she's probably quite nice to use for for a um Wood Titans team because a, a lot of other fire defense down monsters, um they they don't have anything higher than eighty percent. The highest is just her and and Fire Odin, who both have eighty percent, and um, Fire Yuki with skill books. If you completely max skill with Fire Yuki, she goes from sixty to eighty as well. So there's no hundred percent armor breaker um, or or defense down monster for for fire for the fire element. So just having the skill alone makes her somewhat unique. The thirst really isn't too good for Titans. But she actually has pretty nice stat attack stats. She um, she can nuke pretty hard, and she has nice HP. So you can if you put her on like some of your uh, nuker comps, you know, with your other courageous strike monsters, um, you can go with you can go with uh, HP defense attack or HP double attack as well. Um, some people can use her for arena defense as well, but I I don't really don't. I don't really recommend that because she's actually really, really squishy. So she has the, you know, they could kill her pretty fast if they really wanted to. If you have her on like HP double attack, um, pretty much with two dark nukers, they can just kill her in one turn. Um, if you have her on HP defense attack, I think that could work as well. It might take them two turns or if they have three dark nukers, they could kill you with three dark nukers. So... I think her best use is probably to armor break for titans because there's not a lot of good fire armor breakers. Um, yeah. So this is the uh, this is the water nightmare. Uh, she's a very very popular monster. A lot of people like to use her because she has a 100% three turn seal and she also has this heal, which is very good for arena defense. Um, she's also really tanky. So you basically just gem her with HP HP defense. Um, and with high resistance, so she cannot get stunned or anything, and you just have her, you know, just non-stop sealing, non-stop healing, and you win the game or something like that. Um, yeah, she's she's a really good monster. Just have her tanky, high resistance, really not much to say. She's mostly for PvP. You can use her early on as your main healer because this actually heals for quite a lot as well. And she, being a nat 5, has um, a decent amount of HP, although this is not too high. So this is uh, this is the Wood Nyx. Um, she's becoming very very popular now. A lot of people thought she was pretty shitty until very recently. Um, I I also six starred her. I was I was one of the first I think to to catch up on the catch on to the trend because I have very good pugilist gems. Um, so I basically have her as a variant, and I fed my variant one into her, and she she has the nice um, resistance variant skill. If I ever need to use that for arena, but currently I'm using an HP lead because um, my other monsters have very high resistance. But sh the reason why she's really really good is if you have a pugilist set on her, um, she's r extremely annoying because she just basically keeps morale boosting, healing, and stunning nonstop, and she's also really tanky, so you don't kill her first. And uh, she has slightly higher HP than the than the 
the, the water one. So there's actually two ways to gem her. If you have other threat units, like um, if you have aggressors or something like that, um, people might actually go for the aggressors first and ignore her. In that case, I would recommend you go triple HP because if you go with triple HP, she has a much higher heal because her heal is based on her HP. Um, but if you have no other threats and people might actually try to kill her first, then you can go with um, HP, HP defense. This would actually get, give her the highest effective HP. And you just want high resistance so she doesn't get stunned, doesn't get armor broken and killed really fast. And because she's a defender type monster, so the, um, you know, if she gets armor broken, she becomes a lot more squishy. So that's one of the problems with her. She would be really o OP if she was HP. Uh, she's already really OP. She's definitely top tier right now. And if you have a pugilist set on her, like she's definitely top tier. Um, basically, if you have threats, go with triple HP because she's not going to get hit. It doesn't give you give her the highest effective HP, but it doesn't matter because she's going to be healing for more and keeping your other units alive. But if you if she's if you're if you think she's going to be the one that's going to be get hit the most, uh, then you can go with double HP defense. Um, all right, so this is the light nightmare. This she's a she's a defense aggressor with sap um i think she's really really nice for golden speed 10 because she has the potential to be a solo tank because she's an aggressor and she can hit pretty hard on her first skill and if you have a triple defense siphon set that means that she can get her siphon up or get her aoe up a lot faster with the siphon if you have her um with high defense because because of the aggression so she's a nice monster to use as a solo tank um plus sp siphon monster plus um sapper which is really really nice like she has the perfect skill set for b10 um she, i think she's definitely like top top tier if you're using her for for farming golems b10 and yeah basically use her as a solo tank with other sappers um i think if you had her with like three other sappers you can make her b10 run like under a minute if you all have them on siphon gems um yeah she's pretty much as perfect if you have if, if you happen to have her and you're using her early on just make her as tanky as possible. Just go with triple defense um, protection or something like that. Or even conviction so she doesn't get... Actually, she doesn't need conviction. B10 doesn't really have a lot of uh, a lot of debuffs. Basically, just, uh, just as, as high defense as possible so she, so she hits hard. And then you can use that for... Um, use her for solo tanking Golems B10. Throw in some other sappers. And um, you should have a very, very fast Golems B10 run. And eventually, when you get Siphon Gems, I would recommend you put her on Siphon. And she, would, she could... She could definitely do some crazy shit if she has some uh, si some siphon gems on her. So this is the Dark Nightmare. Um, she has a 40% morale boost in seal and an 80% seal. So she has very, very nice skills. Unfortunately, she has very shitty stat distribution. Her attack and defense are very, very low. Um, she has decently high attack, but her rec basically all her other stats went to recovery, which is a little bit sad. But she's still pretty good on defense. If you put her on defense... Um, it's kind of the same reason you would use a Wood Nightmare. You just put her on Pugilist, or um, if you don't have Pugilist, you just get, give her, make her tanky, high resistance, you know, double HP, defense, um, conviction, or or broken, or protection, or life. Um, just make sure she's she's tanky and she's there to do the morale boost and seal and just kind of be annoying, really. Um, I don't think she's too good with all the Pugilist, but if you have her on Pugilist, I think she's still definitely top tier because. You can, she can, she has a 40% morale boost, and 40% is definitely quite high. Um, unfortunately, she is a dark monster, so dark monsters don't start with 0% base resist. So you kind of just want to, kind of just want to boost her resist up as high as possible with substats as well. So, you know, it's a little bit harder to gem her, um, but the 40% morale boost definitely does kind of make up for it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, that's, that's kind of it for 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 today i'm gonna be continuing this this series um after after a while just uh you know every every few days i'll kind of mix it up do some guide videos do some uh like guide videos like these do some uh update videos on my account and also do some spotlight videos as well as some like account review videos as well um but anyways hopefully you guys enjoyed this video i'll see you guys in the next one and peace out